Hey guys and welcome back to another problem from this year's International Math Olympiad. This is the fastest IMO problem 2 solution in IMO history. Our task is to find all integers a, b such that this expression is eventually constant. In other words, we are asked to find all a, b such that we can find positive integers g and capital N satisfying that the greatest common divisor of a to the power of n plus b and b to the power of n plus a is equal to g for all n greater than capital N, so for all n large enough. While the solution is short, it is still a tricky problem and not too easy to come up with a solution. And therefore, before presenting the solution, I want to give some motivation how to come up with it. We are interested in prime divisors of both these two numbers here. And we already have the trivial ones, namely the divisors of the GCD of A and B. But now we want to find out if we can find more common prime divisors of these two numbers not dividing a or b. For doing this, let's take a prime number p, such that p divides both of these terms. So p should divide a to the n plus b and p divides b to the n plus a. Here n is just an arbitrary large natural number. We want to bring these two right hand sides here together. And one way of doing this is, for example, by multiplying this first right hand side here by b to the power of n minus 1 because then we have b to the power of n in both terms. Subtracting those expressions implies that p also divides a to the power of n times b to the power of n minus 1 plus b to the power of n minus b to the power of n minus a. And now this can be written as a times a to the power of n minus 1 b to the power of n minus 1 minus 1. For the second factor here on the right hand side, we know that there is a factorization. Namely, we can write this as a times ab minus 1 and now times ab to the power of n minus 2 plus ab to the power of n minus 3 plus and so on plus 1. The second factor here is promising because it is symmetric and a and b, it is co prime to a and b and it is independent of n. So we can hope that for a suitable choice of n, prime divisors of a, b minus 1 indeed can be equal to this prime p here. To investigate the behavior of those primes, let's consider a prime q dividing a, b minus 1. We want to figure out if we can choose n in such a way that a to the power of n plus b is congruent to 0 modulo q. So let's take a look at the residue class of this term. We have that b is congruent to 1 divided by a and therefore we get that a to the power of n plus b is congruent to a to the power of n plus 1 divided by a or we can write this as 1 divided by a times a to the power of n plus 1 plus 1. So we would like to choose n in such a way that a to the power of n plus 1 is congruent to minus 1 modulo q. Unfortunately, this is not always possible, but it would be possible if instead of this plus sign here, we would have a minus sign. This is because of a mass level theorem. Namely, by choosing n plus 1 congruent to 0 modulo q minus 1, we know that a to the power of n plus 1 is congruent to 1 modulo q. Let's track back where this plus here came from and then we can maybe make appropriate changes to get this orange minus here. At first, we want to have a minus at this point here. And to get this, it is necessary that b is congruent to minus 1 divided by a. And therefore, instead of considering a prime divisor q of a, b minus 1, we want to consider a prime divisor of a, b plus 1. Note that a, b plus 1 is indeed also a factor of this expression here if n minus 1 is even. The idea of considering the number a, b plus 1 is crucial for solving the problem. And now, to convert this into a proof, we want to prove that all prime divisors q of a, b plus 1 divide g. Actually, we will be able to prove that a, b plus 1 divides g. Now, let me prove to you that this proof is really short. To start the solution, let's take n congruent to minus 1 modulo phi of a, b plus 1 which I'm going to denote by d. Modulo a, b plus 1, we get that a to the power of n plus b is congruent to 1 divided by a plus b 
which is congruent to 1 divided by a times 1 plus ab, which is congruent to 0. By symmetry, ab plus 1 also divides b to the power of n plus a. Since n can be chosen large enough, we can conclude that ab plus 1 divides g. Taking n congruent to 0, modulo d, we get a to the power of n plus b is congruent to 1 plus b, modulo ab plus 1. For n large enough, the left-hand side is divisible by g, so this is congruent to 0. Since ab plus 1 divides 1 plus b, which is positive, we conclude that a is equal to 1, and in the same way we get that this is equal to b. We can check that this works, and so this is our only solution. And therefore, we are done.